Asel, I think it's time that you shared your insight about efficiency and particularly how you came to coin it e-fishnet. I love efficiency. Do you also love efficiency? Do you find yourself always trying to be more efficient and it's really hard for you just to stop and being the being? Are you a human doer? Mm. And if so, this talk is for you. Hi, my name is Dr. Asel Romanelli. And I'm Billy Romanelli. And this is the Potential State. And today we're going to talk about stop being efficient. It's too much work. So Western society loves efficiency. It's true. We're constantly looking for ways to streamline, hack, shortcut, or ways to be able to do more and yes, less. Yes, make things quicker, better, faster. For me personally, it's super, super hard to stop. I'm always thinking about the next thing. As we're even recording this, I'm thinking, okay, what else needs to be done? We have another one I want to record. And this multitasking is multitaxing. I love that. It really prevents, it's draining. It's draining to always be in more place than one. And it's also a fallacy, right? Because we can't really multitask. So what we're actually doing is we're not fully devoted to any one thing. Exactly. We're just switching constantly rather than completing a task from A to B, finishing it, and then moving on to the next thing and moving on to the next thing. We're trying to do maximum and minimum, which basically means we're over, we're rely, we're over relying on our frontal cortex and we're not, we don't have enough time just to be intuitive thinking or just to like kind of zone out, be in our nothing box. Creativity, imagination. You know, and even just to, you know, to, to, be, to postpone things or just to be, just to hang out. So, this, so it's kind of draining on the frontal cortex. We're doing maximum and minimum. We're not really present what we're doing. And basically, I call it e-fishnet because it's like a net. It's like this efficiency. E stands for efficiency, but also stands for uh, um, you know, electronics and all the gadgets that we have. It just kind of takes everything in. It grabs all of you, and in the end, you're not present yes. in the actual moment. No joke. That's what we call it at our house. We call because, it. Because I think... I think that's part of what's important, right? Is that when you're when you're when you're efficient, there are times when it's really important to be efficient, right? When you need to kind of just, um, you know, not touch on the nothing box, and you need to kind of prioritize and figure out, you know, what do you need to do first, and how can you do as much as possible in the least amount of time. But you, I think, the challenge is knowing how to switch it off. Yes. And, and sometimes, you know, a sale is like very passionate about efficiency and sometimes it's very hard for him to shut it off. And so we've made it a kind of playful efficient as kind of a, a play inducing code word that like, okay, this, this part of the day or these next tasks don't need to be efficient. But how did you get to the term efficient? Because was, it's all consuming. Because when you're it's efficient, all consuming. it's all consuming. It takes up everything. Like those, those nets that want to catch tuna, but they catch dolphins and all these, all these rare species. Like you try to just do efficient on one thing, but it takes everything away. Now, what's the opposite of that? Okay. And that's what I've, I've been trying to work on the past couple but of years. But what's everything? Can we just get clear? When I'm efficient, I'm not present with you. I'm right. not really thinking about this you're moment. You're only thinking about the task and the tasks that, that follow rather than... Who you're with. I'm not actually enjoying this moment. What is the, how are you showing up? How are you being present? How, how is this task getting done rather than getting the task done? I don't think I understood. How is the task getting done rather than getting the task task. done? I think for me, it, come, it connects to enjoyment, right? Because if I'm doing this talk and really thinking about the next thing I need to do, the next project, the next talk, I'm not really fully enjoying this moment. Everything is like one long to-do list. I remember a client who said everything in his life, all his friends and family, they're all like one long to-do list. Yeah. It's a never-ending to-do list. So when do you stop? When do you actually enjoy yourself? When can you not be efficient? Right. Because the... Op- no, go on. No, because the opposite of efficient is doing the minimum at the maximum, right? Is enjoying yourself with maximum presence, so if maximum was efficiency in the beginning, min, min at max, min, you know, asterisk at max, is actually doing less and being maximum present. Being less efficient leads to more playful, more being. But what I like to call disco organized, like disorganized, but it's disco. There's a place of, of playfulness, of fun. Well, that's, I think, where the kind of creativity and imagination come in. And here I want to say, like, a lot of the examples that you've been giving are, are I think, kind of 
when you're talking, what comes up for me is mostly like in the personal sphere and at home and with family and things like that. But actually we can apply this also to work, right? Because it's not an either or, it's not a zero sum game. And I think that what happens is when we recognize that we're so busy doing the task at hand rather than how we're approaching the task and how we're doing the task. And then, then we allow ourselves to open up and be creative and imaginative on how we're doing the task. That kind of connects to what Adam Grant talked about procrastinating, right? The original. Yeah. They have time to think exactly. and just, they're not like, rushing. And it's not to say that you should, you know, like I'm passionate about deadlines. I love deadlines. But I think that you can have a container or a framework and leave some room for recognizing that it doesn't need to be rigid and it's not just about getting the task done, but also about the environment that we're creating as we're doing the task. Because if we're you know, so gung ho on getting something done, let's say in a work environment, and we're, we're not aware to how we're talking to our colleagues and we're not aware to kind of the, the stress that we're exuding and because stress and anxiety, all those things are contagious just as playfulness and creativity are contagious. And so if we're, if we're going kind of laser focused, we might be missing out on potentially good ideas. We might be missing out on creating a warm environment in our workplace. So I think that it's it's I think that it's important to recognize that like there's nothing wrong with efficiency. Efficiency is super and fantastic. It's the softening yeah. of, right? It's how we're approaching the task. I think it was also thinking it's interesting because as you're talking, I'm thinking I'm more thinking about efficiency in relationships and you're saying also efficiency in the workplace. Because I never thought about that. No, because I think it's interesting because a lot of times what I'll see with couples is it's the switching off. It's stopping efficient when you're coming home. Right. But what I, exactly. So what I'm trying to say is, yes, it is about relationships. That efficiency bug or, or, or whatever, it is about relationships. But to think that we can switch off here and switch off there, let's try and, and create a more holistic approach so that we recognize, you know, and I think that also has to do with kind of prioritizing or, or the setting that we need to be efficient in, but recognizing that you can be efficient and also open up a little bit and leave some space for, you know, how we're approaching the task and creativity and, and connection, which relates to what you're talking about in terms of like the very um, specific context of a relationship, Yeah. right? And I'll also say that play is a good counterindication to efficiency because um, Dr. Stu Brown talks about play being, ha- having no point. There's no point right. to play. Being purposeless. Right. Yeah, being purposeless. Right. Refer to the meaningless conversation, the purposeless conversation episode. And basically, so, so how do we do that? Especially if you have a person like me who's always efficient, it's hard for them to stop and just to be in the moment, to be disco organized. So the first thing is you need to find a time, a place, or a person that can hold on a little bit for reality. We spoke about the look at the upstairs, downstairs episode, but never, next to every person who's like who's flying high, who's in the moment, there's somebody who's usually holding like, reality. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, yeah. So you need to find a place and a time, and I'd off, I'd suggest doing a time limited, having someone to hold reality. Yeah. Into time, say the next twenty minutes or five minutes. Right. Well, I think that's kind of like now that I'm I'm taking what you're saying, I think it's this, and you said how kind of play is, is a good almost antidote. Well, I want to say that it's a good kind of combination. Like if you can enter, if you can, if you can weave together efficiency and play, like that's the sweet spot. That's yeah. where it is, right? right? And I think maybe, you know, as we were talking, I was kind of reflecting, maybe that's also one of the reasons that, for instance, I really love deadlines and I always make my deadlines, I always make my own personal deadlines like before the real deadline. And I think maybe that's part of it, right? It's like creating a container that within this container of efficiency, let's call it, right? Within this container, you have room to move around. You have room and that's kind of equivalent to like somebody is holding the space, like time is time is not gonna get lost, right? Like in total play, right. like Stuart Brown talks about. So you will get the task done, but there's enough of a container to hold you that you can stay playful and creative and, and, you know, move around within the, within the borders. Yeah. I like that. The next thing I suggest, take off your watch, put your phone away. I'm talking about when you're trying to be present with your partner or kids, 
Okay, just being always mindful of the time kind of pushes you into, okay, when's dinner, when's bedtime, da da da, when we have to wake up tomorrow. Yeah. And then just drop that a little bit, soften that perception of time, because time and efficiency are obviously really high, highly connected. Yeah. And then slow down. Try to do one thing at a time. We're eating right now. We're playing right now. Right, that's using... the task. The task yes. is being present at dinner, right? I think it's, I think for people who are really efficient, and you'll, you'll be able to attest to this a bit more than me because you're like the very high efficiency person in our relationship when when it's confined to like a specific amount of time or like a specific like if we say you know Saturday morning we don't have anywhere to rush to like let's just chill like that's the task is that helpful for you to like wrap your head around it and let go of the watch and like let go of that do you know what I mean so that it's yeah so- it's not like okay forever now try and be like less efficient and let go of time but like for saturday morning there's no you know for me this the symbolism of taking off my watch at the end of the work day is really really good yeah i need that i need that that space to compartmentalize say okay right now this is the goal the goal is to be present the goal is to be present with you or the goal is just to be present another if you're a high efficiency person you can make a list of all the things that are not efficient. They're usually the ones you feel a little bit guilty about. Let's say just watching YouTube, watching NBA highlights from the finals on YouTube. What if there was a reframe, though, that you could give yourself that, like, actually, that <laughs> is efficient, right? That is efficient in giving you downtime. That is efficient in giving you self-care. That is efficient in getting into the nothing box and de-stressing from the day. Yes. And that is efficient in preventing burnout. Yes. So the reframe that is, if you're always efficient, that's, a, that's the highway to burnout. So if you can schedule in times where you're going to be inefficient and disco-organized, then slowly what's going to happen is you're going to feel more and more moments of presence. You'll still be reaching your deadline, maybe a little bit slower, but you, while you, you'll enjoy the ride. Because at the end of the day, most of, your le- most of your day is on the way to something else. If you can be more present here. Yeah. Well, so that's one of the things that, that I was going to say, as you just said that, is that, you know... I think what happens when we become so efficient oriented, right, and are unable to let go of that is that nothing becomes fun anymore. Like no task because you're, 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 you're in this task, but you're already thinking about the next. And, and, and I use the term task loosely, like that can even be, you know, that can be having your parents over for dinner or that could be taking the kids to the pool or that could be, you know, going to the cinema, like when you're in the in this to doing mode, no, then you're, you're at the cinema now, okay, but then you have to like, you know, get dinner ready and then you have to take, you know, the kids to the birthday party and then you have to come back and then you have to do bed. Like it doesn't end. And so then everything kind of loses what it loses the substance. It becomes one line game. Yeah, exactly. And the end goal is to finish the game. And the, so so, which is interesting because now that you're saying that, I'm thinking about like, so if, if everything's a to-do list, then the whole day is one long game and you're basically waiting for the day to be over, right? For the kids to be, right. to be in bed. Right. And then you start living and well, enjoying, but what's the point? You know what? But yeah. Whole... You're, you, you're playing the game to win or lose. What's, what's the point? The... If everything is one long to-do list, then what's the point of life? Then you're only going to rest when you die or at the end of the day when you close your eyes. So if you're feeling burnout, rigidity... Um, not fun, and you're just <clears throat> you're being becoming cynical and heavy. There's a high probability you are becoming over efficient. So take all these tips that we said. Try to stop being efficient. Cut cut yourself out of that efficient. I would say don't stop being efficient because I think for people who are really efficient, that's that's hard. And I think that there's also there are a lot of benefits, and being efficient is important and great. I would say just see where you can kind of where you can find pockets of of kind of softening it or have containers where you can kind of like, I don't know. I just, I imagine is like rounding the corners of it. And I think that's also a discussion to have with your partner. Who's the, who's the higher efficiency partner and how can you find a balance? Right. And it's especially crucial if you're both high achievers, high efficiency people, you're going to have to help each other slow it down. And if you have a big differences in temperament and efficiency between the pair, use that as a strength not just as a problem. Yeah. A lot of times Galit can help me slow down and actually enjoy the moment. And I think that is super important. So if you're high efficiency, don't also necessarily judge your partner who's less efficient. See it as a gift. Because the opposite of efficiency 
Yes. It, maybe it's presence. I don't maybe know. it's maybe it's being in the present. I don't, I don't know. know. You're very bold with the, the yeah. opposite of without. So the truth is, originally in the original script, I thought the opposite of be fish in it. There's a bag of fishies. <laughs> it's exactly the opposite. Having tons of fish, I love tons that. of moments. Going in different directions. Yeah. Trying to catch them all. It's disco organized. I love that. Anyways, that was Galibro Romanelli. That's Dr. Estelle Romanelli. And we're the potential, potential state. state. We'll see you next time.